All right, folks, we are jumping into section 5.1, differential equations, uh, the notes for slope fields. Finally, after doing a bunch of example problems, uh, we're going to dive into the notes. Here we go. First thing I want to do here is uh, really simple. Uh, in each box below, sketch a line segment with the approximate indicated slope. We don't have graph paper here to kind of draw to scale, so it really has to be an approximation. So first one is a slope of 1. That's pretty straightforward. We know that's at a 45 degree angle. We're going to have a little slope triangle there with a, a horizontal leg of 1, a vertical leg of 1. A uh, slope of 1 half, that's not quite as steep as before. So again, draw the little slope triangle on there to see that we have a rise that is half the length of the run. A uh, slope of 0, that's, uh, that's a can of corn. That's easy. That's just horizontal. Uh, and uh, moving on to a slope of negative 1. Well, it should look exactly like the one just above it, except it should be downhill. Still have a slope triangle there that shows a rise of 1 and a run of 1, except this one is decreasing uh, so from left to right. Okay, this one's tricky, a slope of 5. That is enormously steep. Uh, and to try and sketch that and show a rise of a run of five it's tough to do without graph paper I mean I can see right there that I didn't quite do it enough not to scale but if it were uh, that vertical leg would be five and the horizontal leg would be one let's go now and do negative two it's gonna be steep in a negative direction to one uh, and these last two kind of illustrate how challenging it is to sketch the uh, uh, a line with an indicated slope without graph paper. These don't look too dissimilar uh, other than one obviously has a positive slope and one a negative slope. Um, but once you get to a slope above about two, uh, it's hard to show a difference between that and anything higher than it, at least when you're drawing little line segments. If we were drawing much longer segments, it would be easier to show that difference. Okay, I asked you to do this here to sketch these quick uh, six line segments with the indicated slope because that's one of the things you're going to need to be able to do when you're asked to sketch a slope field. Now you might be wondering what the heck's a slope field. So let's discuss uh, slope fields. Uh, first of all, I want you to recall that geometrically the general solution of a first order differential equation represents a family of curves known as solution curves. One for each value assigned to the arbitrary constant. That's our friend plus C. Uh, I actually don't like the, the, the way I worded this here. I don't like geometrically. I'd like to switch that to graphically. I think that's more appropriate. Um, and then the other thing I'll mention here um, is that that plus C is our constant of integration. All right, so let's take a look at the definition. Uh, a slope field, also known as a direction field, you'll never hear me uh, use that term. I always use the term slope field. Uh, consists of line segments with slopes given by a differential equation. So quite simply, uh, this graph we see here, all of these little line segments have a slope that's given by a differential equation. For example, uh, this one here looks like it's about positive 1, has a slope of about positive 1. These guys in here look like they're horizontal, so that would be a slope of 0. Uh, this one right here, eh, that looks like it's negative 1, maybe maybe a little, uh, little more negative than that. This one here, probably like negative 3. So that's what a slope field is. So what does a slope field do for us? Well, it does this. The line segments provide a visual perspective of the slopes of the solutions to a differential equation. The graphs can be used to sketch the solution curve through a specific point, which is something that we have also referred to as an initial condition. So what does this mean? The solutions that we're talking about here the solutions follow a path parallel to each slope mark. Okay, before we jump down here uh, to this this part of, uh, of our discussion of slope fields, I want to try to give you a visual example that I think um, will illustrate what a slope field can do for us. Uh, take a look at this. Uh, this is just your garden variety maze. 
which I'm sure many of you still uh, still enjoy during your free time. Uh, so how 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 do you do a maze? You well, you start by going in here and you try to find a path to get out. You're not allowed to do that. Okay, you're not allowed to cross over one of the boundaries in the maze. But what you can do is follow the sides of the maze and make a nice smooth curve going through the maze without crossing any of the boundary lines and then boom, congrats, you win. Uh, that's exactly how we use a slope field to show the solution of a differential equation. So let's jump down uh, to, to this, this part of our notes right here. The figure shown here is the slope field for y prime equals x plus y. That means the slope of the tangent line for the solution curve is equal to the x coordinate plus the y coordinate. So for example, if I look over here at a point 1 comma 1 on the graph, the slope through that point would be 2 because 1 plus 1 is 2. So let's try to graph um, some particular solutions. First we're going to do the particular solution through the point 1 comma 2. So I'm going to go ahead and graph 1 comma 2. It's a point right there. And I'm going to attempt to sketch a solution curve through that point. What I need to do is follow the field, the slope field, the lines on the slope field, just like they're a maze. So I'm going to come up from that point and kind of head this direction. And then from that point, I'm going to kind of come down. And it appears that I've got a sharp curve here. And I'm going to trail off that way. So that is a particular solution for this differential equation through the point 1, 2. Let's go ahead and try another one. Let's try the point negative 3, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So the point negative 3, negative 2 is right there. From that point, it appears that our particular solution is going to go down this way and up this way. Notice that I'm following those slope field lines kind of like they're a maze. They, they serve as tracks to show us where the particular solution goes. Okay, um, I, I want to share with you that at the end of this page one, I'm going to direct you to a video to work with your calculator a little bit to show you how to get a slope field on your calculator. Uh, but for now, I want to go into example two. Example 2 says, for each differential equation, complete the table of values of dy dx and sketch the approximate solution through the indicated point. First, I'd like to comment on why I constructed this table the way I did. You'll notice that the x values, uh, typically if we were to see an xy table, it might look something like this. And then we would fill in the y values. That, that's not what I'm doing here and I'll share with you why. Uh, I, I turn the x values this way and I have them go from in increasing order that way uh, from left to right and then the y values they go down and they go actually in decreasing order uh, and there is a reason for that. The reason why I do it in this fashion is so that each of these each of these cells in this little table we're creating here match up with the corresponding point on the slope field that we have to graph. So for example, this cell is the point negative 2 comma 2. That matches up with this point on the slope field region. Uh, let's take a look at another one, this one over here. That's 1 comma negative 1, which is going to be this point right here. So that's why I have this table constructed in what might look like a different, uh, different order than normal. Uh, but there's a reason for that. So let's get rid of all this stuff. And let's start calculating slopes for this slope field. Uh, so all I'm going to do is take the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate and plug them into the differential equation. You'll notice here the differential equation does not even have a y in it. So once we calculate the slope for one x value, we can just fill those values all the way down the column, column because they do, the, the differential equation does not depend on y at all. So let's go here, go ahead here and do x equals negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 
And now let's look at x equals negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And I hope you get the pattern there and can fill the rest of these values out as follows. There you have it. So these values represent slopes for solutions to our differential equation. And I'm going to now sketch a slope uh, segment on the slope field for each of these values. So uh, let's do the easy one first. Let's do this column right here. So wherever x equals 0, I'm going to have a horizontal line segment. Now let's take a look at this line here, where x equals 1. When x equals 1, I'm going to have a slope of 2. So I need to draw a fairly steep segment representing a slope of positive 2. Uh, for x equals 2, I have a slope of positive 4. That's going to be even steeper. And again, it is hard to draw approximate slope segments um, to scale when you can't draw them longer than just a uh, half an inch or so. Uh, what is most important is the relative slopes. What do I mean by that? This one has to look bigger than this one, which has to look bigger than this one. That relative uh, slope amount is what's really important. So let's go ahead and finish off the slope field for those two other x values. Again, what's most important here is the relative steepness of your slope segments. Uh, they don't have to be perfect. All right, uh, the next thing we were asked to do is uh, sketch an approximate solution through the indicated point. So here the indi indicated point is negative 1 comma negative 1. That's right here. And I'm going to go ahead and sketch the approximate solution through that point. So our solution is going to look something like that. And I think if you think about it a little bit, it might this might actually make sense. If we have dy dx equals 2x, and we were to solve that differential equation, we would get y equals x squared plus some constant. So we should have a parabola looking shape uh, that changes only by a vertical shift. Okay, that one was fairly straightforward. Now let's do part B, and I'll share with you that part B is a little trickier. For part B, we have the differential equation dy dx equals uh, the opposite of x over y. Uh, the point that we'll eventually sketch our solution through is 0, 1. Uh, this one's a little trickier because we have a differential equation that depends on both x and y. We also have a negative sign thrown in there, which always is confusing. I'm going to go ahead and fill out the entire, entire table and then highlight a couple things I want you to be aware of. Okay, so there's the values for all of our slope segments. Uh, I hope you notice that when y is 0, we have uh, an undefined slope because there is a y in the denominator of our differential equation. So let's go ahead and sketch slope segments on the slope field. I'm going to start with the easy ones, which are these guys right here. Let's go ahead and do uh, this column next. And again, what's most important there is the relative slopes. Here I have a slope of 1. Here I have something steep or a slope of 2. Uh, undefined, I'm not sure what I'm going to do there yet, so I'm just going to leave that one blank. Uh, then I have a slope of negative 2 and negative 1. Notice how this is steeper than this. That's what's important in a slope field. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish off the rest of the slope segments. Okay, so done with our slope field. So let's go ahead and try to sketch a particular solution through that point 0, 1 right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plot the point 0, 1. It's right there. And, and I, what I see is a general circular pattern here in the slope field. And that kind of makes sense. I want to go back now and address these slopes here, undefined. We know that a vertical line has an undefined slope. So I wonder if I can just go ahead and add... Uh, vertical line segments on my slope field right there. Uh, and now I'm going to sketch an approximate solution that is incorrect. 
I'll explain why in a minute. But it looks like I have this circular pattern here, so I'm going to go ahead and try to sketch in a circle there. Uh, and I will share with you that this is wrong. Now I'm going to tell you why. The y dx is undefined for y equals 0. So our solutions cannot cross y equals 0. And I want to go back to a, a, an old idea to tell you why. Differentiability implies continuity. Uh, because we know our function is differentiable, right here, our solution has to be continuous. Well, it's not differentiable at y equals 0, therefore y equals 0 cannot be in our solution. So the correct approximate particular solution through 0, 1 will look like this. And the moral of this story is never cross an asymptote of the differential equation. In this case, that was y equals 0. Do not cross the asymptote of the differential equation. Okay, folks, I'm going to shut it down. And again, remember, uh, the next video I want you to look at is one that will go into how your TI Inspire can create these pretty slope field graphs. And then we'll jump into page two of the notes.